The Canning Stock Route is one of the world's longest and most remote public tracks. Totaling 1,700 kilometers, a little over 1,000 miles, it's the longest cattle stock route ever surveyed. It was just 87 years ago that the last cattle drive was undertaken along Alfred Canning's stock route, and only 45 years ago that the first four-wheel drive explorers attempted to retrace the route. Today it's as remote as it ever was, and while it is no doubt less rough and demanding, it is described in Hemmer's Great Desert Trails book like this. No track compares with a canning stock route in terms of sheer distance and mechanical and physical endurance required. It is Australia's toughest four-wheel drive trek. It is thanks to the tireless efforts of individuals that not only keeps this trail open to explorers like us, but makes it possible by restoring the wells and the water they provide. Tastes good. Tastes very nice, actually. I invite you now to join us on our 22-day expedition on the world's longest public track. I'm Andrew St. Pierre White. Join me as I share my passion for building four-wheel drive trucks and traveling to the remotest parts of the world. If you enjoy this video, please subscribe and remember to hit that notifications bell to make sure you catch our weekly videos. It's July 2017. It's a four-day drive from my hometown to the starting point of the Canning Stock route, and the sun is setting on day one. I'm traveling with my close friend Paul Marsh. He's a highly experienced overland tour operator and classic rally mechanic. Not only is this for me the very first time I have explored the Australian outback, but I'm driving a brand new truck on which I've been working and preparing for this expedition for the past five months. The full weight of the stress of building it and getting it done by the time that we, I had to leave has, hasn't left me yet. I'm actually still quite stressed. Five months ago, it looked like this. The good part about it is it's, it's driving brilliantly and um, uh, everything is packed inside and in fact I had, a, I had a, a good time packing it because I was able to open a whole lot of boxes that I hadn't opened in years. Well, I'd been through them but I hadn't used so much of my camping equipment for a long, long time. And while I was in England, my camping equipment wasn't used because I, ha I, was, I was shooting in, in the States and in Africa. I wasn't using much of my own equipment and of course now I had to find place uh, for each item, find place in the truck. That was enormous fun doing. Now, tell me that that doesn't have character. And uh, of course, I've got some equipment that I've actually saved specifically for my Australian outback trips. I must say that I'm very pleased with the truck. It's, I, I, I. I think I got most things right. I really do think I got most things right, but of course, we'll only know for sure when the roads get really rough, and that's in about four days' time. The other part of the build that was great fun was showing it to Paul for the first time. Right now, collecting Paul, uh, I want to film his first reactions to seeing the truck, because he, he hasn't been watching the videos. He hasn't been in Malawi. So, um, Paul is the most experienced overland vehicle builder I know, so his approval was important. Andrew, man, good to see you. <laughs> How are you? How are you, my friend? I haven't seen you. I was in Malawi. Oh, great. That's Absolutely. always marvelous. No, I had a great trip, really. Oh, man. Okay, that's a good start. Oh, it looks great. I love the color. Jeez. <laughs> I'm impressed. Oh. We're going to have a lot of fun driving this one up. Yeah, this has to be the best truck you've built. It is the best truck I've built. There's no question. <clears throat> it's the best truck. It's, it's, it's a lot better than the other one in, in a number of different ways. The colour is just something else. And of course the Alucab roof. And I mean, you've got great detail, eh? 
the home is it taken? I took delivery in February. February. Mm. Wow. Yeah. So of course you're going to make let me look over the whole. You're going to be living in it for four weeks, so you will probably get to know quite well. Mm. <laughs> and you'll be able to nitpick uh, until until your I heart's gonna, content. I, want to check every I, I am no, I don't want you to. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bad idea. <laughs> well, you you know me. You know, I know. I know I'm you. Fussy. That's the problem. I'm fussy. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I'm so excited about this trip. You know, this is this is actually a big tick box. Very big tick, you know, bo tick and box. Coming for me, coming back to Australia. Yeah. You know, of course, I lived here for a while. And, yeah. Uh, coming back to actually say we're going to drive the canning stock route is just one of these incredible experiences. It's like a lifelong experience to do. Yeah. And we're going to do it in probably my most favourite truck of all time. <laughs> right. About 750 kilometres behind us and my very, very first night camping in the Australian outback and uh, that's been an easy day's drive the car's going brilliantly and uh, we're about all oh, 100 meters from the road and um, we're just going to set up camp here we'll get fuel tomorrow morning after about, about one hour uh, continuous uh, north from here we'll get fuel um, i'm just going to set up camp we decided that because we haven't done it before everything's new we wouldn't wait until it was too dark well, we haven't done it on this truck yet. This is christening our new truck. The new truck, first night's camp. Have we named it? I have named it. Okay, what's the name? Smeg. Smeg. <laughs> because of Smeg... <laughs> you get the joke? <laughs> he gets the joke, okay. Because if Smeg had to make a car, they'd make one of these. Well, it would definitely be this colour. <laughs> <laughs> the colour, I agree. Yeah. Oh, man, it's a treat to drive. She really is. Nice to drive, hey? Yeah. And so, night fell and we slept with the road trains rumbling past. Day two. We've done about a little under 800 kilometers today, a little more than 600 yesterday, so we're a little more than halfway. Two full days driving. And now, as far as I'm concerned, the magic of Australia begins because with the trees and the light, the light is so... It's just... The, it's, it's, the light is extraordinary. It's something about it. It's, it's blue, but it's, the sun's going down, so that's orange, and it's, it can't make up its mind whether to blue, be blue or orange. Absolutely stunning. And all we did is at half past four we decided time to find a camp, slowed down to 80, looked left, left, right, left, right, 10 minutes, saw a track. We're a half a kilometer from the road along a little track. Silence. Tea? Tea? The drive today hasn't been in scenery like this at all. It's actually been quite dull for almost all of the day drab, red soil, not a lot of trees, lots of roadkill. I, we, 30, 40 dead kangaroos, really a remarkable number of roadkill and lots of wedge-tailed eagles. Uh, and now this area here is called the Pilbara. We're in the eastern section of the Pilbara, mining area, very hilly, very wooded and very pretty. I want to share with you one of the worries I have about the Canning Stock Route. Not the vehicle, not the people we're going with, we're meeting up there, I'll explain who these people are later, but it's the route itself. There are two things that concern me. One, that it's going to be lots of same old, same old, not really different from day to day. I know there are some areas that are quite different from other areas, but I'm worried that it's going to be very monotonous. The other thing that is, but is, is foot worrying me far more, and that is the number of people on the trail. Now, Canning Stock Route is one of Australia's great off-road tracks. And when, I'm, when I say great, I mean one of those that appears on most avid four-wheel drivers in Australia's uh, bucket list. And many of them, it will be right at the top. And because of that, there are thousands of vehicles that do the trail every year. 
and most of them do it in July which is right now because of course winter time is a great time to do it because temperatures are moderate and it's more fun. Are we going to be driving in a traffic jam? Am I going to be crossing these dunes with vehicles that want to drive much faster than I behind me or much slower than I in front of me? Will I be able to pull over and get a shot, get some shots? Will there be lots and lots of people on the track and in a, I don't think that'll spoil it for me, but it'll certainly tarnish the experience. And the reason why I'm worried really is that there is a trail in Botswana. It's called the classic, it's the Maremi Savuti Trail. Those of you who've done it will know what I'm talking about. I haven't done, and it's magnificent. Animals, and it's fantastic. But because there are so many people that do it, I haven't done that trail in 20 years purely because there are so many people doing it. Those are my fears about canning stock. Stick with us and you'll find out if they are realized. The deeper we get into the bush, <clears throat> the more typically Australian the bush is becoming for me, the more familiar it is. And although I've never been here myself, of course, I've read lots of books about it and the trees and the color of the grass and everything. And we're about to hit remote Australia, the true outback, and that I've never done before. Eastern part of Western Australia. Yes, Australia. That's not an African baobab tree. It's a boab tree, common in this part of Australia. I've been driving for three and a half days, and I'm half a day's drive from Halls Creek, a small town which is right at the northernmost point of the Canning Stock route. And I've decided to take the route from north to south. So, in effect, I'm driving back home to my home in Perth. It'll take me a little under three weeks to get there. Well, very exciting for me to be in my new truck on rough ground for the first time. Just so, so excited about everything, really. Just behaving like a small child this morning. So, first gravel road, listening for every rattle around to feel and see if something's about to uh, drop off and so far the ride is I mean we haven't even deflated the tires and it's really good I think it's working very very well uh, give me your thoughts on the uh, ride and everything and Andrew we've got an amazing truck here I think the suspension is doing exceptionally well I'm really interested on these new shock absorbers and you know the weight has been balanced quite nicely in this truck. She's she's handling the, the, the ride nice and smoothly. I'm actually looking forward to seeing how she's gonna handle on the dunes. But so far, Smeg's doing her bit. During our few days drive through Australia, I've seen a lot of wildlife. Almost all of it dead, mostly kangaroos. This is unusual in that it's a pig. As we approach lots of birds wedge-tailed eagle and I was told beware of the wedge-tailed eagle because they gorge themselves on roadkill and they often take flight when a, pa a car passes and they will always fly and take off into wind and because they gorge themselves they fill up with meat and they can't take off properly so your car slams into them and then the gruesome part of the story is some of them are so full of maggots that they burst onto your windscreen. I don't know if that is an Australian folk tale or not, but I'm not taking the chance. We are tackling the canning stock route in the company of a couple from Scotland who have just spent six years living in rural Australia. 
Like me, they have a Toyota Land Cruiser, but this is the far more luxurious 200 series station wagon. But unlike me, they have experienced the Australian bush, and so have suggested that we just quickly go into the Northern Territory uh, before we join the canning. Why not, eh? After all, how far can it be? It turned out to be about 35 kilometers, but don't let that fool you. The size of Australia beggars belief. I mean, for example, on the way here, four days, high-speed driving, and we didn't even leave the state of Western Australia. Alice Springs, on this red road, 1,100 kilometers without a town, with out a fuel stop to Alice Springs on this road. 1,000... Imagine the next service is 1,100 kilometers. You don't have to imagine it. Here it is. This reads 759 kilometers, but it's been erased because it, is, because it is now far, far more than that. There used to be fuel and services at a place called Rabbit Flat. That closed down a couple of years ago. It's now a full 1,100 kilometers before next services. And the attitude of the different states is quite obvious. Welcome to Western Australia! Ta-da! Uh, Northern Territory don't treat it quite the same. Whereas this sign says, if you squint really hard and slow down quite a bit, welcome to the Northern Territory. And please be aware that liquor and prohibited men don't drink too much and, and we have lots of police and shower offices around. And uh, But, you know, carry on. This is the Northern Territory and my very, very first time visiting it, which means that of all the states on the mainland, the only one I have still to visit is the Capital Territory. But I hear that Northern Territory people are a bit weird. I mean, for example, right now it's two o'clock and right now it's half past three. Not three o'clock, mind you half past three. So here I'm actually quite peckish. I'm looking forward to supper. And here, nah, just had lunch. Quite fine really. We're not going to continue into the Northern Territory. We're going to actually head back to secret camp campsite number one. We are heading for Old Halls Creek, the location of the original end to Alfred Canning's route. The drive is through mile after mile of cattle stations where the roads are quickly becoming unkept. The air system that I've built into my truck is a lot more advanced than I've ever done before. And one of my ideas I'm going to try out now. Vehicle covered in dust. So in here, easy to access, is my airline. I'm going to close that because I reckon with this system, which includes a tank air reservoir and the dual ARB compressor, I've got to plug it in. And I'm going to clear the dust. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that the direction of wind is uh, not going to blow the dust in my face and that the car windows are closed. So okay wind is blowing this way so I'm going to blow this way. How do you like that? This is low technology. Uh, this <laughs> this, this uh, is Justin. This one always works. Look at this, whatever. You can break down, you can still polish your vehicle off. Look at that. Does a beautiful job. Okay, 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 okay. 
<laughs> okay, <laughs> we'll let you know. <laughs> I think we're going to get on. There you go, yet one more success. What a nice thing that is. Mm. Meet Laura and Justin Busbridge. Hello. 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 <laughs> <laughs> our hosts. I'm going to call you our hosts. Okay. Because you've been in Australia for how long? Six years. Six years, now. Six years. Yeah. And you've done a lot of overland traveling, outback traveling, haven't you? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, thank you for taking it, bringing us here. What else have you got for us in store? We're not doing canning stock. What else have you got in store? Well, hopefully some amazing secret secret places like this one, which this is local knowledge has brought us here. Okay. You, you don't really find these on the maps. So there's no sign to here. Okay. So it's because we were working uh, remote, and we still do, that it's those, you know, that local people said there's a great spot just down the road. That's nearly 300 And you've 300 got more kilometers. of those along the canning? Oh, certainly the top end. We, we know that where it's on the tanning line. But, um, but uh, yeah, also we've got some great food. <laughs> <laughs> Good, and I'm beginning, you're beginning tonight, aren't you? We're beginning tonight. Yes. So we're going to do some uh, chicken with uh, sage and goat's cheese. Right. Yeah. No wine, Excellent. unfortunately. Dry communities around here, so no oh, wine. Well, but, uh, oh, right, dry communities, yeah. that's true. Yeah. Well, I look forward to it. And we get to know the Northern Territory wave. That just <laughs> means there's flies. The Northern Territory wave. wave. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll remember that. <laughs> when the sun goes, they'll disappear. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. Still. Okay. This is the. The still. The still. Smile. Okay. Smile. <laughs> oh no, it's not the still. It's the movie. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. So now. Daniel, <laughs> places to put water bottles in. Okay. Brilliant. Look at that. It is the best little pink truck. No, it's not. It's only Join us next time when we cut an onion, get spiked by grass, incredibly prickly, and fill up our tanks. It's the fifth day from my home, but the first day on Alfred Canning's route. We are travelling the route in the opposite direction to which he first surveyed it, so we'll be travelling north to south. We've stopped for the night, camped amongst the Spinifex grass. Our campsite is very close to a place called Old Halls Creek, where his surveying terminated. Tomorrow we will hit the track known as the Canning Stock Route. But first I'd like to make an introduction. This is Mr. Spinifex. This soft, cuddly, fluffy grass is called Spinifex. And I've been warned, I was warned, be careful of the spin effects, it gets everywhere. And driving here, these rolling hills with this soft, it's not soft, it's far from soft. In fact, it is incre incredibly prickly. It gets everywhere. I am sure that I have not experienced the worst of Spinifex because the only thing that's happened to me up to this point is that I've had parts of my legs spiked. And I think we're going to hear a lot about Spinifex in the days to come. We have actually camped on what, what might be described as private land. This is a gorge cut in the middle of a very, very open flat landscape. 
and uh, is part of a cattle ranch, an enormous cattle ranch. These ranches are as big as some countries. They are mostly owned by large corporates and uh, because of the challenges of cattle farming uh, and the associated weather problems you'll have three or four five years of drought. No private organization can handle that kind of hardship but the big corporates of course can because they can actually they have the finances to actually move the cattle in huge numbers around the country and they still do that by droving the traditional cattle herding and they also do it by rail and of course the canning stock route is one of those very old droving routes that we're going to follow my co-driver is overland guru paul marsh guru so we are going to have um chicken first of all i'm going to uh, cook it with a uh, sage and one and uh, lemon and some chicken stock just to cook it through then we're going to sear it on the griddle here um, then I'm going to take the juices from that chicken we're going to Justin won't be our chef for the entire trip more is the pity juices, add some goat's cheese and then that's going to go into mix through some nice pasta uh, penne penne pasta and then we'll serve that on a bed of wilted spinach. So that's tonight's menu. Yeah, can you go to it darker? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm yeah. I'm yeah. this with a yeah. 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 more water. Um. <coughs> We're lucky this time. Timing of the moon is often so important. And it's a good idea to sit with your calendar and see what the moon's doing. We, we've, we've hit it just perfectly this time because we've got uh, the, the moon rise last night. It was at about eight o'clock and um, magnificent. But before then, we had the Milky Way galaxy in a, all its glory. We didn't do that this time. This was pure luck. I mean, I just looked at the, at the calendar and spoke, and spoke to everybody involved in the trip and said when can you do the trip and they said this time and that was it we didn't even look at the the moon and its movements and we i guess got lucky today we're heading back to hall's creek we will resupply all of the bits and pieces fill up absolutely everything the vehicle then will be at its absolute heaviest and we will head on to the canning stock route heading south to a town called Waluna and we will get there in probably 18-ish days time. Villa Luna, uh, little village here, please insert card. So now, um, just under 700 kilometers of rough driving, and because I don't know the fuel consumption of the vehicle, I've got to just guess. I'm going to fill up everything here. Fuel prices are steadily getting higher. It's 140 in town, 270 here, and the village, the one and only fueling stop on the whole route, it's over $3.50 a litre. So it's getting quite pricey. But hopefully, She'll be light on fuel. We shall see. Onward! Well, no sooner have we entered the canning stock and the corrugations begin and they're already nasty so I'm going to thinking also about the dunes that lie ahead I'm going down to 2.5 bar on the back 
and 1.8 bar on the front. Ah, uh, you know, there is nothing quite like it. Friends, my own truck and a new place to explore. We have arrived just after sunset at our campsite on the edge of Stretch Lagoon. Time for a, here they come. Just stop for a moment to make sure that they're good behind us. See them in the far distance. Uh, lots of corrugations this morning. Time for coke and drill bores. We've just uh, hit the first few very shallow dunes. So it's time now to put up our warning flag. Um, it's not only just courteous to do so but it also increases safety of course as we fly a nice high flag so when you come up a blind side of the dune then people can see you long before you actually crest the dune so it avoids collisions and uh, time to put it up sometimes I actually have to pinch myself this is a working day. I'm working. Boy, I love doing this. New truck, new country, new trail, new, new, new. It's fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Fantastic. It doesn't get better than this. And we are on day one of the actual track itself. We have encountered our first traffic, a lone truck travelling in the opposite direction. And our first well. This is well 51. There are 51 wells on the Canning Stock route. This is the first we will be counting down from now to zero. 
I assume there's a well called Zero. And more traffic. These travellers are going south to north, the way most people do the Canning Stock Route. And then a startling reminder about what can happen. You wonder what caused the fire? Think you could get that going, Mr. Marsh? Yeah, a bit of time, eh? And the harsh reality is this happens. And uh, this is a dying shame. You can just imagine your vehicle. Oh my god. Makes me sad. True or bad electrical wiring or spinner flex underneath. Many of the original wells dug by Canning and his crew have fallen derelict, but many have been rebuilt, and because of them, we can top up our water supplies en route. This is our first chance to do so. You know what? Tastes good. Tastes very nice, actually. Well, of course, the Canning Stock Route is a heritage trail. It's a, it's, a, it's a reminder of the days of the very, very tough men conquered the wilderness of Outback Australia. And here lies Jack the Rager Smith, cook and stockman, died aged 70. 70 after a fall from his horse on 23rd of May, 1939. That's not very long ago. One more. That'll be enough for shouts. We've done a really good stretch today, uh, about 170 kilometers. So uh, what we're we actually going to do is now to actually turn around. We noticed behind us, about two kilometers, uh, there's an open area where we can set up camp. I decided that I, I'd rather not camp near the wells because that's most people that do the canning stock will go to the wells because there's fresh water there and they can have a shower and everything. We're carrying enough water. We don't need to do that. And these red hills are going to turn golden in a few hours' time. These are the Braden Hills. And the best part about not camping near the wells is that near the wells, there's no firewood. Found some. Feels like we've been on the trail for weeks. It, it really does feel remote. One of my big worries about 
gang stock was it's a very popular route um, and that there would be too many people on it and in fact that we would be we would have a feeling of not have a feeling of being really isolated and remote I'm very pleased to say that although 15 vehicles passed us today coming in the opposite direction it certainly does not feel overcrowded at all and it does feel very remote and it is very very remote people pay a lot of money to see a mountain range like that well it's just part of daily overland travel in Australia The sun is well below the horizon now. The other three have gone off for a walk. I don't know where they've gone. And just being here alone in the utter silence has made me... I recall my trips through Botswana and Namibia. I did solo trips completely on my own with myself and my truck. And in fact, I was so alone, I didn't even have a sat phone with me. I wanted that, that sensation of being utterly cut off. And it was exhilarating. I found the nights quite tough. Um, sometimes, I mean, quite lonely, and I felt very vulnerable, particularly because of the wild animals around. Um, but the daytime's exhilarating. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some solo trips. I think maybe a week-ish, Western Australia, not too far from my home, maybe two days to drive there, not more. Canning Stock was four days to get to the, the northern part of Canning Stock. So something obviously less ambitious. but. The experience of Canning Stock I th is already giving me confidence. So I'm thinking about maybe I should do some solo trips. Because I remember with enormous fondness the solo trips I did through Botswana, 2009, 2010, and solo trips through Namibia in 2010. I must do some more but I'll do them in this country. Morning. Um, Woke up to a brisk wind. Actually, we went to sleep in a brisk wind. And uh, inside my uh, troop carrier last night, I uh, was very, very grateful that I could actually get out of the wind. This is why I built the truck the way I did. It's windy outside, really quite, actually quite unpleasant. Uh, they're sitting having coffee. I'm very tired this evening, so I'm gonna uh, turn in early but I can spend time even stand up I mean move around um, inside my vehicle completely sheltered from the wind outside it's a quite a really chilly wind and so it becomes a mini camper when I want it to be but with the side doors and access I have easy access uh, like would one uh, one would have it with a camper but it's not a camper it's the same size as a station wagon so you have all the convenience of a camper but not the size and yet well that's why i love this truck so much well we found ourselves uh camped last night really just found an opening away from the spinifex grass uh, with this magnificent view last night and uh, wind came up uh, I went to bed early and of course woken up this morning with the wind still blowing actually really quite strongly. We went, got past well 49, well 48 is about one kilometre away from us. Probably won't visit it, um, I don't believe it's an active well, we'll go straight past and continue our way south. <laughs> The track 
stretches endlessly ahead of us. From here to the first sign of any habitation whatsoever is about 600 kilometers and it's going to take about six days to reach it, a village called Kuna Warichi, where we will be able to refuel, but not much else. This, for me, is the true spirit of overland travel. Australian feral camels were imported in the 19th century and Australia can now boast the world's largest camel herds. These are the more common single humped dromedary camel. Hi! Good man, enjoying it? Yeah, very much so. <laughs> uh, we thoroughly enjoy it. Yeah. Yesterday we met about seven vehicles. Today the oncoming traffic has started early. Hey, we're following you on YouTube. Oh, right. We knew you were out this way. That's oh, okay. Said, oh, it sounds familiar. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. loving it. Absolutely brilliant. We weren't sure if you were going to look because your last vlog we saw was about a week and a half. Yeah. To your left. Oh, okay. So we weren't sure where we were leaving. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. enjoyed the build box. It's working so well. We'll be talking And there are very few rattles. Yes. Which is a big thing. <laughs> 25 to Well, that was nice, meeting a few fans that appreciate a good truck. Look out point, and uh, I'm going to stop here for a quick um, break this morning. Met some really friendly people on the route earlier on and um, uh, it was actually nice chatting they had seen the videos on YouTube and were hoping to bump into us so uh, we all got lucky that's why I like having this new chair tradition if we need this rock we I'm not going to write anything on it but I'll still put a rock on it so I've let Paul write it instead. Well, 46. Uh, it's a little after 12. Good time for a place for a, a lunch stop, I think. At well 46, the uh, the wreckage of a Nissan patrol very strong smell of gearbox oil and if I have a look at this vehicle the vehicle is actually complete um, it wasn't crashed nobody crashed it um, it was obviously rolled onto its roof by whom probably people trying to get some spare parts off it um, it was probably just broken down it was left here for a while but unbelievably uh, you can see there that it was uh, was rolled onto its uh, onto its roof welded the door open and that's the door the damage around the door front axle still there half shafts and uh, wheel hubs brakes have been removed gearbox still there all intact exhaust intact rear axle intact with its brake drums uh, really this vehicle is is pretty complete inside steering wheel and some of the dashboard has been stripped out barely an hour after our lunch stop another one this time it's a jeep third sight and how many have we seen now? Must be about fifth, fifth one we've seen. Burnt out, turned upside down, and one hell of a fire. So we've seen a Prado. Prado, um, the patrol. Yeah, the patrol today, what other one? Is there anything? Is this the third one? This is the third. This is the third we've seen, yeah, since we started. Yeah. 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 And you can imagine all the fuel on board. 
uh, scary. so ago the nose of the Land Cruiser was bouncing too much like this it's a function of rebound so we made an adjustment to the BP 51 shock absorbers on the front it's a wonderful system in that you can tweak it for the terrain there and then so at the moment it's not kicking up much no but it's great um, Great flexibility in adjusting it for the conditions, and actually, it's very easy to adjust. It takes no time to get under the car. Yeah, no, it's very just straight straight smallest forward. adjustment. You know, will actually make quite a difference. Yeah. Four days on the road. Time for a shower. A little past well 46, Gravity Lake, our campsite for the night. There's the opening for the shower. It's zipped into the ensuite and I'm now ready for my shower. Here is where the beauty of the system lies. I've selected whether I want tank or bucket and I turn on the pump. All four of us will shower tonight with my onboard hot water system. So now <coughs> you had a you had a shower. Yeah, that was fabulous. So how much water did you use? Well, between the two of us, we have that's a ten litre container. So what? Nine litres, four and a half each, maybe. I think Laura probably took more than me because she was washing her hair, and I haven't got any. So I think that's probably maybe what, three litres for me and five litres for her? Yeah, fantastic. So, six, so we're 45, so we hit, we'll hit well, this is, this is was, well 45. This yeah. is well 45, it was clo well 45 was and this is there, just, yeah. just past it. Yeah. Yeah. So, there you go. 
Yeah, we're making good progress. And we'll further do some staff photography tonight, I think. Well, we've all had a shower. We all clean. Yep. Shower them, feed them. Yep. Good sleep in a place like this. It's as quiet as you can get. And tomorrow morning, drone, drone flying. Drone. Oh, that's good. Filming in the blackest night. Uh, the uh, familiar southern cross and below it the diamond cross and below that the fourth cross um, almost due south due south just a little bit to the left of the that those constellations and there they are um, so uh, this is the kind of campsite I absolutely love because it is very flat very open love big sky country and Kenning Stock Route considers, continues to surprise. I'm flying the uh, Mavic Pro and uh, a far leap it is from my first drone which was actually a Typhoon H. If you've been watching my shows you'll know that uh, I took one to Africa, Namibia last year after buying one in England, test flying it, getting reasonably familiar with it and took it to Africa and it wouldn't fly because some Typhoon H drones do not acquire satellites when in the southern hemisphere and being an inexperienced pilot I could not fly it safely without the use of a satellite and so um, this is not a product review apart from saying that as a newbie to drone flying uh, this is a absolutely remarkable little tool it's fantastic it does everything it's simple it's quick to set up it flies well and the picture quality is good not great but very good perfectly good enough for what I'm doing and I don't find the drone fly the, fly the drone every morning I don't see it as a primary tool for storytelling I find it I, I think it's um, I think drones actually use too much because they're cool not because they're great at storytelling but every now and again they can do something that nothing else can do and is a huge wow factor and so I see it as a it's not a must-have on my shoots I don't have to have a drone in my shoots but I am, I do admit that I'm enjoying it more and more and more, but I'm finding very select times to fly it because I actually find that, that I, you know, because it, it takes quite a bit of time to get a flight going and getting shots going, um, you can lose a lot of time actually getting other shots and other, other great content, which is easier to get, quicker to get, uh, and, and often is more meaningful from on the ground with, with you know, traditional cameras and things. So heading south, landscape, dune, one dune after the other. There are close to 1,000 dunes on the Canning Stock route. And as we're moving south, they appear to be getting higher and batches of them really quite close together. A magnificent landscape. I just love it. Yeah. 
No sooner had we crossed a dozen or more dunes that the landscape flattens out completely. These are salt flats where the camels seem to prefer living. This is well 44. It's quite obvious that a lot of the wells have been refurbished and others like this one have not been. And those that have been refurbished are used by travelers to this day. And it interests me that, well, who would pay for that? Because who else uses, there's no agriculture, there's no farming. The only people actually that are making use of the wells are travelers like us. I think it's wonderful that the government, whoever, thinks that's important and keeps some of the wells active and the water fresh and I think that's fantastic. Because we consumed more than our usual supply of water last evening with our showers, we're going to try and top up our water supplies wherever we can. And because we don't know which wells are serviceable and which are not, we'll check every one. Our lunch stop is under a group of tall trees near the track. It seems that there is not a plentiful supply of shade on this section of the track. Hello. How are you doing? Well, we were the first to arrive at, the, at our lunch stop. No shade for several hours as we were driving through looking for a place where we could stop. Heard on the radio that another convoy coming up from well, 41 was also looking for a place to stop for lunch. So we arrived here and within 30 seconds, three other vehicles joined us and two other vehicles passed us. But this is not, I'm glad to say, typical of canning stock, even in high season in which it is now. We've actually had no other traffic at all, all day. And it's half past one. You say, is there water? There's water. Watch that. Yeah, I'm not going to stand on that. Yeah. Lots of wasps. Lots of wasps. Lots of finches. The water doesn't look great, does it? It doesn't, no. We should get a rope and a bucket. Yeah. And pull a bucket load out and see what it looks like. Yeah. Well, it's well 41. We're now going to find out if the water's good enough to, uh, to shower with. Because we're just running a little bit short, we will get our next reliable water supply um, at the village, which is at least two to three days from where we are here. Yeah. Oh, that's clean. Let's have a look. That's Andrew shower water. I tell you, it's easy. I just throw it over. Him. I throw. Out. Andrew, you wanted a shower. <laughs> Look, we could clean that. We could. Let's, we, if we need to get water, like, if you're going to need to clean it, okay, okay. let's chuck it in. You know what would work? Put a rock in. After topping up our shower water cans, we also give the finches something to drink. We are chasing the light. We've been looking for a suitable place to set up camp for a while now. It's mostly thick spinifex grass, impossible to camp on. We are 470 kilometers from Bililuna, for us the starting point of our canning stock route expedition. For over an hour now it's been endless spinifex grasslands and we need to find a clearing on which to set up camp, preferably close to the track. When we find one it's on top of a low dune.
more. Okay, let's just check the level of the tent. Uh, I reckon this is going to be perfect. Okay, are you sure? I, I'm not sure it's deep enough. <laughs> no, listen, that's the whole point. Look, it's going to drop down onto the bottom axle. Paul has dug a hole for Justin, so Justin can level his vehicle and therefore level his tent. Oh, that's perfect. It is perfect. Yeah. I'm not sure you get out tomorrow, but anyway, <laughs> that's not my problem. <laughs> Someone's got to dig a hole here. And it's not even for my vehicle or my tent getting it left. Oh, come on, just you get oh, fed, don't you? Okay. Get on with it. Do I get a beer at the end of this? Damn, I hope so. Only one. Yeah, that's the problem. Are we level? Luckily for you, yes. Otherwise, no beer. <laughs> Cheeky bugger. No, you're one degree off. Sorry, no beer. Yeah. I'll have it. Don't worry, it won't go to waste. Sure, fun. I always like to show off on how quickly I can rig up our tent. And it takes precisely this long. The weight on the roof is stopping it going up by itself. Normally it does. Really? I, I'm not making excuses. There you go. It's done. As opposed to? Or, as opposed to, let's watch. You have an audience of millions. <laughs> Do it slickly. <laughs> this is a waste of film. Turn the camera off. Then we need to see how long it's going to take. Do you know how long it's going to take? Nearly done. Got to put the pegs in, yeah. <laughs> done. 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 Well Definitely done. done. Yes, it was, it was like lightning. Still got to zip this up though, but done. <laughs> but done. <laughs> you uh, <clears throat> still at it then? Nearly done. This year I celebrate 35 years of overlanding and I th think to myself, what a Bet, what better way to celebrate that anniversary but by coming to one of the great overland expedition tracks in Australia. The Canning Stock is described as the, probably the most challenging in all of Australia in terms of endurance. It's very long, the longest, it's tough on vehicles and it's tough on people too. But by no means the most difficult in terms of technical four-wheel driving. I've only been on it now for five days and it is magnificent. It will stand out as one of the highlights of my career, I am sure. It is breathtakingly beautiful, diverse, absolutely fantastic. All our rallies at home, all our loved ones, we're thinking of you. But man, we're enjoying this. Wish you were here. <laughs> this is amazing, isn't it? No. Man, we're enjoying this. I bet you wish you were here. <laughs> I bet you. <laughs> <laughs> um. Well, good morning. The sun is just rising above the very flat plains as we camped last night in dune land right on the top of the dune again one of our best campsites which one so far is the best well this is going to be uh, very difficult to decide another magnificent one it seems as if we are averaging one dune per day now from 
Waluna in the south, they number upwards 1 to 51 at Bililuna in the north. And we are now between wells 41 and 40. And 41, of course, where we got the water yesterday. So we're averaging one well a day. So that's about as much information I can give you this morning. No extra news. Vehicles both running superbly, no problems. The food isn't running out, seems to be working well. Uh, water is fantastic. There will be water in two days' time, we know that. And um, another fantastic day in Outback Australia. We've discovered, during our morning vehicle checks, grass caught up in Justin's Land Cruiser's radiators. And it looks like a lot of it is not from this trip, but from their previous adventures. What's going on here is absolutely typical. A uh, vehicle is, that is a very well maintained vehicle. But it's maintained by dealerships. And dealerships don't understand overland travel. So they didn't check the radiator for grass seeds and things like that. They get kicked up um, when driving along this kind of track, kicked up into the radiator. They won't check that kind of thing. Time to clear it out and find some way of protecting the radiators. The fact is that if you don't maintain it yourself, the chances are it's not going to be well maintained unless you have somebody that understands this kind of application for the vehicles and will service your vehicle properly. Good luck in finding one. help comparing areas that I travel in to previous places I've been. The obvious thing here is the Makati Kati pans. Um, the vegetation on the pan is quite different here. There's a lot more of it. The, uh, the pan surface look, looks equally treacherous to drive across. Obviously very soft. Uh, but I'm surrounded here with red hills which is unique. We're heading towards 
remarkable coincidence that uh, at every single day at around 12:30 we come across an open flat bit almost parkland like landscape uh, where we can stop and have a nice lunch um, it's quite weird actually that it's just the timing seems to be perfect every single day we're between 39 and 38 and today will be our last uh, night before we reach the village. The village is not the center point, it's before the center point, but the village allows us to stock up on fuel and also on water, uh, and we will be re reaching there sometime tomorrow. Time for a Spinaflex update. My nickname that I've given myself is Colander because the bottom of my legs have more holes in it than your average Colander. Every time I walk around I forget about the Spiniflex and the next thing I have spikes in the lower half of my legs. This is the Wadabuni rock hole near well 38. Canning's men used explosives in an effort to create a place for standing water but the cattle never liked this place. Since then, it's been used by Aboriginal folk, the evidence of which are these spear sharpening marks. And this graffiti is from Canning's own crew. We are camped in a forest of desert oaks. The day has been mostly dune driving. Salt pans, more dunes, some salt pans, more dunes, and now this. Between two dunes, unlike all of the others, just hundreds of very, very old, some up to 500 years old, desert oak trees remarkable. The route is like that. Every, every now and again it's, oh, wow, look at that. A complete change of scene. Amazing. That's Paul showering. <clears throat> Everybody's been using the shower because it has warm water and a hassle factor of zero really. So tonight we're having a pre-cooked meal cooked by my daughter at home before I left home. Isn't that nice of her? She is a very, very good little cook and has made my life a lot easier by making some really nice pre-cooked meals. All I need to do now is find the wooden spoon. Well, good morning once again. This morning, camped in this beautiful little plateau between two dunes and our forest of desert oaks. We are not far from well 37, and that's just over the rise there, less than a kilometer away. And today, we're going to basically do what we did yesterday. More dune driving this morning. Uh, 
It's been great fun. The June, June seems to be getting a little bit tougher. Uh, the sand is a little bit soft and the constant uh, pounding on the suspension because I, I got the, get the impression that a lot of people that uh, drive it drive perhaps too hard or too high tire pressures, certainly damaging the track a lot. I'm finding it unbelievably easy to drive, but for the fact that it's very, very rough. But we just we're just driving over. over June. We're not even t we haven't taken one second attempt at a single June yet. So, um, but looks like by the state of the road that a lot of people really struggle to get over these dunes. This is well 36. So we are now paying the price of not taking the rig out for a test run. We've got some rattles and we've got one particular rattle that is absolutely ear splitting and it is right next to my ear. So we're going to try and solve the problem because it's driving me nuts, do you hear? Crazy. I believe it's got something to do with the mounting bracket and the rivets that have mounting the shower curtain the ensuite onto the side of the vehicle and I believe that in a blind spot we've got a rivet moving through and actually rubbing on a on a piece of metal that's what I believe but it's so so difficult to pinpoint yeah we've got it down to this area here but uh, it actually just resonates through a cavity mm. so it'll be something small and that's what I said if you if you actually fitting something and you actually like this bracket's been sickered and it's been riveted and I think the only challenge we're talking about is this rivets touching the inner existing roof and just rubbing on that inner existing roof and resonating through this cavity here and driving you mad. Earplugs? No. Music? Loud? Yes. Possible. Uh, but you know, the big mistake of course was not to take it on a trial trip. You know, iron out all the problems. But actually this rattle only actually started on day six so if I'd gone for a weekend away I don't think it would have appeared. Gonna let the tire pressures down a little bit more we have been at uh, 1.7 on the front we're gonna go down to 1.5 uh, tires are warm but not hot and down to 2.3 on the back we found the dunes easy really easy at those pressures but we know that ahead of us is our horrific corrugations everybody talks about how terrible terrible they are 50 to 60 kilometers of them so I thought let's go down to I mean let's really soften up the tires a lot the day's uh, drive has been spent mostly um, dune driving quite high dunes, some of them quite challenging, and then between them wide, broad, open Spinifex plains, and uh, the track that belongs, runs along the plains are quite corrugated in places, but it's just one dune after the other. It's almost as if, like a, like a Russian dolls, you, you, you take out one and there's another one, and there's another one, and then there's another one. It's endless, endless, endless day after day and I guess we've been driving over this kind of terrain now for five full days I would say almost unchanging but with the occasional lake dry salt pan uh, ridge of red rocky hills to interrupt uh, the, the landscape it's enormous fun driving and not super challenging, but definitely entertaining. So now we are at well 33, and we've started to uh, actually bunk down with uh, everybody else. Now this is not really the halfway point, although it is kind of called the halfway point. It's a little more than one third, so we've covered a little more than one third of the canning stock route. And this is the watering, this is the place where you know all the time you will get beautiful, clean well water. 
and unlimited unlim water supplies means unlimited numbers of campers. Anyway, time to do laundry. Thank you for watching. If you haven't already, subscribe and click the notifications bell so you don't miss our weekly videos.